Jake Humphreys, PSP NFL. This is Turkey Day. We have the first game coming up in four hours. Not sure how many of you people are going to actually listen to the game, uh, listen to the podcast rather, but I'm going to go through it and I'm going to clear my mind up for this one. Um, we've got the Detroit Lions playing host to the Minnesota Vikings. Both of these teams are six and four, uh, and both of these teams um, have played once before. The Detroit Lions are half a game ahead at the top of the NFC North. They did beat the Vikings about three weeks ago off a touchdown to Golden Tate. Um, that had the, the Vikings crowd pretty rattled, and now they're going at it again. And I think it's safe to say that the um, the winner of this game would be the favourite going down the stretch to take the division. Um, this one is a very, very even money, kind of evenly contested gambling matchup. Um, both teams uh, are about a dollar ninety. Um, there is a slight bit of favouritism happening for the um, the Detroit team, the, the 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 home team rather, the Detroit Lions. Um, Looking on sports, but now they're a dollar eighty-eight, and you can get them for minus one and a half at a dollar ninety-nine. The total match points is over under forty-one and a half. Um, my thoughts on this game. Now, I've been a Minnesota Vikings fan for a long, long time, and I picked them last week to win the game against the Cardinals. I think that that was a spot where they were going to bounce back and finally get a win. Um, Carson Palmer isn't a great quarterback right now in my opinion and I thought the Vikings defense was going to have their way with him they did concede 24 points at home but they did enough Xavier Rhodes had that incredible pick six where he ran all the way from his own end zone um, to the other end zone and scored a touchdown uh, they sacked Carson Palmer a bunch um, and their defense did just enough to um, to get the win there the Detroit Lions played a home game against the Jacksonville Jaguars where they weren't exactly polished but Wins are important in this league, no matter who you're getting wins over, whether you're getting wins over the Jags or the Patriots. If you can get a win, um, especially for the Lions, if you can get a win in a game where you're expected to win at home as a seven-point favorite, you're beginning to show signs of being a good football team, a well-coached football team, and a maturing football team. A lot of... um, a lot of squads can come out to games like that and kind of um, switch off, which the Lions may have, they may have had a bit of that at the beginning of the match, but they ended up coming home strong and getting a win and actually covering. I believe they won by eight points, which was good for them um, and kind of keeps this uh, NFC North matchup really, really uh, interesting for Thanksgiving. So we have we have these two teams here. It's uh, Yeah, it really is an interesting matchup. Who, I like, I personally like the Detroit Lions in this. I think that... They have, a, like, like if I look at the three categories of football, or the three, if I look at special teams, if I look at defense, if I look at offense, I would probably give the Vikings the advantage in two of those three categories. The only thing is, this is an indoor game. The Lions have the home field advantage, um, and it's 2016. You can really decimate your opponents by passing the ball, and passing the ball effectively. And the Lions have a better quarterback. They have a better offensive line. They have a better set of receiving targets. And in my opinion, they have probably the best running back on the field um, who is going to be Theo Riddick, who's probably going to play. Now, he's far from a superstar, but he's much more than what the Vikings have uh, with Matt Asiata and Jarek McKinnon, who are between them averaging somewhere around three yards per carry. Um, This Lions team, they're used to playing on Turkey Day, uh, Thanksgiving. Um, And I think that even though the Vikings did get a win last week, I think that the Lions are going to be able to make a few more plays, especially on offense. This Vikings offense is relatively pedestrian. Stephon Diggs is um, the favorite wide receiving target for Sam Bradford, and it's looking like he's going to be missing for for this very important game. I'm just going to double check and have a look at Stefan Diggs' status. He's, he will likely will not play. He has a knee injury. Uh, Terrence Newman, he is a key cornerback for the Minnesota Vikings. He's not going to be playing. Eric Kendricks, uh, their linebacker, has a hip injury. He's a little bit iffy. And then you talk about the banged-up offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings. Um, the Detroit Lions have some pretty good interior guys. Uh, they, they have Ezekiel Answer on the defensive end, who is an interior guy, but is a very, very deadly pass rusher. I think that battle there... When you talk about the real weaknesses on the field, I talk. I think I really think about the Vikings' offense. Their offense is, is not is not very good. Um, Sam Bradford is the kind of quarterback who's going to make enough throws, but the question is, can this Vikings' defense keep them in the game? 
um, for Sam Bradford to just be able to win this one by a narrow margin. Like, I don't think that Bradford is going to be able to come out in this one and blow the roof off the Lions defense. Yeah, sure, he can hit some guys for some plays. He's got Kyle Rudolph. He's got Cordaro Patterson. Um, he does have some receiving weapons, but he doesn't have protection. He doesn't have a running game. And this Lions team has a relatively good front seven. DeAndre Levy is missing their star outside linebacker, but... They have a D-line that will be able to overpower this Vikings offensive line, dominate the point of attack. They are playing at home. They're hungry. I think the Lions feel like there's a bit of a sense of destiny. I think that they really feel like this is the time where they can really take the division by the scruff of the neck and jump to first place and go a long way to consolidating that playoff spot. If they go to 7-4 and four here with a win over the second place NFC North Minnesota Vikings, the Packers are still down at 4-6. and six. The Bears are out of the picture. I think the Lions are really going to be ready for this one. They have a sh- Both teams have a short turnaround, but it's going to be a little bit less... Um, taxing for the Lions, who aren't traveling at all. They go from Detroit to Detroit. They played in Detroit on the weekend. The Vikings are going to go from Minnesota over to Detroit. Really isn't that much of a of an issue, but there's definitely a slight advantage here for the home team in terms of um, comfortability and environment and, and the, the turnaround timing and everything like that. So when you're looking at with the Minnesota Vikings, they have injuries. Terrence Newman is out, who is probably one of the best corners on their roster. I mean, Xavier Rhodes is probably the best, but Terrence Newman is a leader in the secondary. You've got Stephon Diggs, who is a guy who's had, I think, over 30 catches in the last three weeks. Um, their offensive line is so banged up. They picked up Jake Long, who was just a guy, a guy, a former um, round one pick who was just sitting on his, his couch. They picked him up. They threw him on the offensive line. He tore his Achilles. He's out for the season. Um, Brandon Fusco, who is probably their their best guard, um, I'm not sure what his status is. I think he might be playing, but I, I, last time I heard something about him, it was something to do with him having an injury. Let me just look now. Jake Long, Andre Smith, Matt Khalil. Those guys are three offensive linemen that are all out um, and have been out for a little while, and those are three guys that would otherwise be starting. Um I'm just worried about the Vikings' offensive line. I'm worried about the protection. Their running game is really, really bad as it is. Their passing game is really, really bad. I think Sam Bradford could be in for a tough day. I'm not going to ramble too much. The late money has come in for the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not entirely sure why. I just think that people, you know, Mike Zimmer, they like Mike Zimmer. The, the, he's a good coach. The Vikings, um, they started 5-0, and so I still think they're a little, bit of a, a little bit of a public team. The Detroit Lions haven't made the playoffs recently. They're not... Um, a team you'd normally associate with winning big games, but I just think the Lions, they have a psychological edge. They beat the Vikings earlier in the year, um, and they also, in my opinion, have a bit more um, a bit more of an advantage on the offensive side of the ball. In fact, uh, I, it, I would say a large advantage. I think the Vikings have more talent across the field when you talk about the young studs that they have, but the key matchup for mine is dominated by the Lions. The Lions' ability to pass the football down the field and the Vikings' inability to protect Sam Bradford. Yes, the Vikings have a better defense than the Lions, but the Vikings have the greatest weakness on the field, their offensive line. I think it's going to struggle. I think it's going to, to it's really going to bend and break against the Lions' defensive front. I think the Lions are going to get the job done. This one it could be relatively low scoring. I'm not going to give you a score pick, but I do like the Detroit Lions to start things off. The home team, I think they get a win against the Vikings, and I think they move forward as a winner and the Vikings go back and have themselves another loss.